Today we'll be interviewing a new member to the Art One family, Andrew Rasu, who shows under the name Rasu. He's been making ceramics for just over three years and is completely self-taught. Through a trial and error method, he has had the ability to creatively explore new ways of developing his creations. His whimsical and funky ceramics are inspired by films, nature, as well as other artists. All while his larger-than-life, funny personality shines through in each of his pieces. Aside from being a talented artist, Andrew is also a full-time art director for a marketing company for over 10 years. We love Andrew's work, and they are a breath of fresh air, as we really haven't seen anything like them. Okay, so today we're going to be interviewing Andrew Rossu. Um, thank you for taking your time out of your day to come and answer some questions for us so we can kind of know a little bit more about you and about your work and stuff, so thank you. Well, thank you for letting me prattle on. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, I guess my first question is, how did you get introduced to ceramic? How did you start making? Well, I just went to different galleries and I saw what people were doing. And I was like, hey, I, I want to do that. I could do that. So just kind of uh, fumbling through, learning the, the, the basic fundamentals of like the heat and the cut body weights for clays and the different glazes. And uh, it's it, it just one of those, like even when, with my painting or my sculpting, as long as, long as I understand the, the fundamentals of how the materials work, then I just kind of, I go, I can do that. Yeah. And I, yeah. I might do it in my own haphazard fashion or way, but that's what also gives it my stamp, my my process. Yeah. yeah. Why did you choose to um, show ceramics with us? Like, why ceramics? Why not anything else? Well, you know, it's one of those things where I just like I just thought it's it's I didn't see a lot of ceramics. I mean, you you have ceramic artists. But I was like, well, I want to give it my own spin, my own interpretation. That's how I kind of work from, uh, I, I like to see what other people are doing. And I'm a bit competitive in the sense that I'm like, okay, what can I, what can I do with, if, it, if it's a, a house? Okay, so we know the fundamentals of a house, but what can I do to make it my own? What can I do to, to make it different and stand out from other people? Just, just different in my own approach. Um, even I'm, I've been studying art, but I'm a little um, shaky on like the process of making a ceramic. So can you kind of tell us like a little bit on like how you personally kind of start that process and what it all entails? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, I do a lot of like, I don't want to say daydreaming, but like on the weekends when I'm uh, doing my grocery shopping, I tend to have a, that hazy, I don't know if it's dementia or just <laughs> deep in thought, but I kind of, I'm, I'm, as I'm shopping, I'm thinking about, okay, well, I need potatoes. I need to remember that I have a, you know, eight o'clock appointment on Monday with Dubai. Or, and then as I'm thinking about those two other things, I'm also thinking, well, you know, if I tried this, I could get, you know, I, I'm all, uh, processing or thinking about how I'm going to put something together. And then, you know, sometimes I do doodles. Sometimes before I start a project, I, I kind of sketch, nothing nothing major. It's more just concrete to get a, uh, an idea of the, the structure or how I'm gonna like piece it together. So then I, I get my brick, my 25 pound brick of clay and I hack off a piece mm -hmm. and it's therapeutic in the sense that I'm, I'm working it. Like you get a good, it's a tactile, yeah. you, know, yeah. you gotta work the clay, you gotta warm it up, you gotta get all the air bubbles out of it and then think about how is the construction? How am I gonna make this work? How am I gonna form it so it doesn't fall into itself? Clay is, it's forgiving, but it's only forgiving so much. So I kind of had to learn my own process to, to, to keep the circles or, or build a, a house. And then, um, so, and it's also amazing in the sense that you have to be very, very careful with it in the sense that when it's drying, that drying process and getting it from your workspace to the kiln, into the kiln, fired, make sure that it doesn't fall apart. Yeah. Or, yeah. You know, it doesn't explode or just crack right down the middle. And then once you get it back uh, from, from out of the kiln, then that's kind of the fun process of like, okay, how, how am I going to glaze this thing? How am I, how am I going to layer i like to do a lot of layering right now i'm kind of playing with the new process of uh using the the uh, blaze as watercolor mm -hmm. like i'm 
I, I, I unfortunately, I, I, I'm really rigid with uh, my application. Like I like to, as you can see, my pieces, I like a thick layer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm trying to not be so rigid and, and I don't want to say perfection, but just so, um, I want to be a little more free flow, a little more, have a little more of the drips and the, the, the staining and, mm -hmm. and process. So I've been playing with the watercolor effect and then layering other colors on top of each other. So when you get that heat in the kiln, that you get that process of uh, the different effects that the, the glazes happen when in that heat. So my question was, do you sketch out pieces first or do you make them as you go or do you do both? I know you kind of highlighted on it, but. I, I, it just depends on what it is. Sometimes, I, like I said, I'll do, I'll do a little sketch to kind of get just the fundamentals of what I'm kind of thinking. Like just to, to get an overall, like a, a blueprint. I don't spend a lot of time on the sketch. It, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, but there's sometimes I'll just get home from work and I decide, you know, I'm going to do a little sculpting and I'll just start working the clay and go, okay, well, this is going to be head, hanging head. And so I just work the shape. And then as I'm working on it and watching my stories in the background, I then, as I'm working, I'm going, okay, well, this is going to be a dog. And as I'm working on it, I'm going, well, this just isn't working. So a, a lot of times when I'm, I'm working and I get stuck, like it's just not formulating the right way. I, I'll wash my hands, get some to eat. And then as I'm, I'm away from it, then I'm also thinking about it. And then I can come back to it and go, okay, well, it's not a dog anymore. It'll be a squirrel. Yeah. Or, yeah. You know, or whatever the clay is letting me form it into. Yeah. yeah. Whatever it wants to be. It, it's going, it doesn't want to be a dog. It wants to be a squirrel or a cat or, or something. Yeah. So you did mention to me that you find inspiration in some of your films. So I have to ask you, what is your favorite film? Well, <laughs> I guess it really depends on on the mood. I mean, I have I have many. I I like the the, the campier the the better. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I love the 1988 remake of The Blob. I love uh, Children of the Corn. My favorite movie would probably be like, you know, Carrie, the original 1976 Carrie. Uh, but I also like, you know, like Shawshank Redemption. I like uh, sci-fi, like Looper and Fifth Element. To, I, I, I don't think I can narrow it down to one. I just like my collection of films. What is your favorite thing about your own work? Hmm. Well, you know, I get, I, I am very excited every time, anytime I get a new piece, I'm working on something new. Like right now I've got a whole barrage of stuff that I've got that I can't wait to get fired and, and glazed. So it's always exciting at, at the end of the process. Like I, I'll see stuff, you know, I have stuff and I, I'm really happy with it. And then like I said, once you start the next project, I can see uh, this is the next project is my, my favorite. You were actually a client with us before, right? Before you started yeah. showing with us? Yeah. yeah. So how, how did you find out about this gallery? You know, I think I probably just was walking up and down. Um, I, I went up and down Main Street, Scottsdale, and I went up Marshall. And there was a couple other galleries several years ago that I used to, to kind of, I frequent. And then, you know, life happens and you get busy with work and stuff. And so I, I think I just, I, I just, I had a day off and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm going to go down to the galleries. And I went back to the galleries and, and like I said, it's, it's that thing that you just see something that sparks your, your eye. Well, thank you for answering all of our questions. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to do this. And um, yeah, it was really nice. Uh, this was a good interview. Thank you. Well, thank you for uh, asking me a few questions. It's great. Thank you. Yeah, I will see you um, when you bring in a few new pieces, actually, this week, right? Yeah, this weekend. Okay, I'll see you then. Bye, Russell. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Bye.